Scenic Hotel Group, a place to stay no matter your staycation. From the Legacy Collection, Scenic Hotels, Suites and Resorts, and Heartland Hotels. Find your place to stay at scenichotelgroup.co.nz. Playoff time in the NFL. Let's get you to the United States. Arif Hassan, a highly respected and hugely experienced NFL analyst for Pro Football Network. He's been writing about the NFL for more than a decade for publications such as the Star Tribune, the LA Times, the International Business Times, Forbes, MSNBC and Bleacher Report. And he joins us now. Arif, thanks for taking the time for a chat across New Zealand. Can we start with today's NFC wildcard game? 49ers getting it done against the Seahawks, 41-23. What did you make of that game? That was a pretty fun game to watch, despite that score. It wasn't a blowout until the fourth quarter. I thought, you know, it was exactly kind of what the worst-case scenario for Seattle would be. The 49ers are really excellent at generating yards after the catch. Seattle uh, has given up the second most yards after the catch in the NFL the regular season. You could see it coming. Uh, It was unfortunate for Geno Smith, who's had a great story. But honestly, both these quarterbacks came into the game having a great story. Someone had to leave disappointed. All right. High-scoring games at this stage of the season, I I, I suppose you'd expect them to be uncommon. You'd expect more, I guess, one-score games. But uh, 41-23, is that higher than you expected? It was, it was, especially, you know, given the weather, you know, it had been raining. There was an expectation that the rain would continue. That didn't happen, but the field was a little slick. And in those conditions, you kind of expect the score to be down a little bit. And also neither of those teams are known for putting up 40 point games regularly. I think this is just an example of, you know, pulling all of your tricks out of the bag uh, in a playoff game, knowing who your opponent is and knowing that, you know, some of these plays are going to be open for you. You know, San Francisco put together, you know, the same play three or four times. Seattle didn't stop it until the fourth time. And by that point, they'd already scored two and a half touchdowns off of it. All right, let's go to the AFC wildcard game just underway. I see uh, the Chargers, LA Chargers have already uh, scored a touchdown to lead 7-0. This is the 4-5 matchup with the Chargers at the Jacksonville Jaguars, two pretty young quarterbacks here, Arif. The Chargers, Justin Herbert, and the Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence, 24 and 23 years old, respectively. How do you see them controlling or attempting to control this one? Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty fun game. You know, the odds makers have it as basically a pick I think they finished with the Chargers as a one or one and a half point favorite. So, you know, we're going to expect this one to go a little bit back and forth. And I really like that these quarterbacks, um, you know, have a chance to shine. They've both had environments that have not really supported them all that well in the past. And, uh, and seeing them kind of, you know, explode and turn into the quarterbacks that they can become, especially Trevor Lawrence with Doug Peterson, you know, has been a lot of fun. But the, the entire uh, roster, for both of these teams, you know, showcase a lot of talent that I think a lot of people haven't heard of. So this is going to be a good opportunity for those guys too. Is it unheard of for for somebody playing in a 4-5 matchup? You know, they've they've obviously finished a bit further down than some of the other teams. Is it unheard of for a team to to come from this position and, and, and make or even win Super Bowl? Uh, it's definitely not unheard of. I mean, we've seen teams uh, from the sixth seed, you know, all, go all the way to win the Super Bowl. I think the Ravens and the Giants have done that famously. I think that, you know, it, even last year we saw somebody come from the 4-5 matchup to make it into the Super Bowl. So, you know, it's definitely not unheard of. You know, the playoffs are a one-and-done uh, type situation, and, and from there that means there's a ton of variance. There's a lot of variability. It's not like you've got another game to prove yourself and, and let, you know, the sample size play out. You're just going to have some some interesting games here and there. Let's go to tomorrow's action. The Bills hosting the Dolphins in Buffalo. The Bills were probably heavy favourites anyway. How much more so now that Dolphins quarterback Tua Tagu Vailoa has been ruled out? Concussion, a second concussion for him. And we're hearing uh, Damar Hamlin, who nearly died two weeks ago, might even be there to watch. Yeah, I mean, that, that that second thing, you know, that's probably going to give the, the, the Bills players a little bit more motivation to perform. But you're right, they, they kind of don't need it. I mean, this is going to be a pretty big talent mismatch. The Bills came into the season already regarded as one of the most talented teams in the league in every element of the roster. Um, and, and now that talent mismatch is going to be pretty dramatic, given that, you know, the Dolphins won't have their starting quarterback. With Tua Tagovailoa, they have been an absolutely remarkably explosive offense with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle catching the ball, but without him, with Skylar Thompson or Teddy Bridgewater, and, and Teddy um, has a broken finger, so he may not play either. So they might be down to their backup backup quarterback. 
you know, they've been a lot more limited. They haven't been able to get as much done. Uh, and I think the odds makers have this as nearly a two touchdown difference, which is pretty rare to see in the playoffs. I mean, this is going to be a pretty dramatic um, you know, mismatch unless, you know, the Dolphins can figure something out. All right. I'll write the bills down for that one. Want to get you to Minnesota. The Giants are there to face the Vikings. Arif, my son is a big Vikings fan. He got a signed Justin Jefferson helmet for Christmas. So do you have some good news for him about the likely outcome of this one? What a Christmas gift. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, <laughs> the, the good news here versus that the Vikings – had already won a game against the Giants this season. In fact, every playoff matchup this uh, this weekend is a rematch of some sort. Here, the Vikings um, did come away with the win, a three-point victory off of the leg of Greg Joseph, a 61-yard field goal, a franchise record. That tells you they need a franchise record. That's going to be a close game. Vegas thinks it's going to be a pretty close game, too. Uh, and I think the problem here is that since that game, the Giants have gotten a little bit healthier. The Vikings have gotten a little bit more injured. But knowing that that result is already in the bag, knowing that they have the ability to win. I think that the Vikings are going to continue to try and lean on Justin Jefferson, where they're going to have an advantage against a, a giant secondary that really doesn't know what to do with all of the skilled position players the Vikings have. All right. Might still be a nervous day in my house tomorrow, but uh, I am encouraged by your comments there. Let's go to Cincinnati. The Bengals welcome the Baltimore Ravens. These two met a week ago, same stadium. The Bengals won at 27-16. Anything to suggest it won't be a similar result tomorrow? Uh, not as far as I can tell. The problem here is that we have another situation where not only is the starting quarterback not going to play, there is some chance the backup quarterback, Tyler Huntley, won't be able to play. So they're going to have to rely on their late-round rookie, Anthony Brown, who did not look particularly impressive uh, against the Bengals. The thing is, the Ravens and the Bengals have had a long history of playing in the final two weeks of the regular season and then seeing each other again in the playoffs. And the Ravens have won almost every single one of those playoff rematches when that's occurred. And I think some of it just has to do with how much better the Ravens are at adapting to their opponent. Um, Joe Burrow, the Bengals quarterback, who is an MVP candidate, has had his two worst performances this year come against the Ravens. So if they're going to win, it's going to be to make sure that Burrow can't be as explosive as he is and maybe you know get some surprises, a kickoff return touchdown, some defensive scores, something along those lines. And the last game, Tampa Bay Buccaneers v. Dallas Cowboys. I read your preview, tale of two quarterbacks, you say, and, and obviously this, when you're looking at guys like Tom Brady for the Bucs and Dak Prescott for the Cowboys, does ring true. Is it a matter, Arif, of, of which of these two play to their reputation as to who wins the game? Yeah, I think so. You know, neither of them have been playing up to that reputation, especially in the last six weeks of the season. Um, I think the bigger concern is Brady, who has, you know, age concerns. He's 45. It's pretty difficult to play at that level at that age. Um, Dak, you know, it's been a little bit up and down. He's thrown a couple of interceptions that weren't his fault. He's thrown a couple of picks that probably should have been caught. Um, but I think here you're taking a look at these two teams. Both have really good defenses. Both have good skill position players. It's going to be up to the quarterbacks to kind of be the difference. If not, if both quarterbacks play poorly, I think this is going to be Dallas's because they have a really phenomenal defensive unit. All right, and the Philadelphia Eagles have the NFC by, the Kansas City Chiefs have the AFC by. Where do you place these two, Arif, in terms of Super Bowl favoritism, the, the Eagles and the Chiefs? Yeah, well, obviously, given the buys, given the fact that the, the top seeds, both of them are definitely in that conversation. I think that the Chiefs would have to be my favorite overall out of all of them. In fact, um, as a quality unit, I would say that the AFC has three better teams than the NFC has any good teams. I think that the NFC teams of San Francisco and Philadelphia are the two next best squads. But the problem is, of course, they all have to play each other before they get into the uh, into the Super Bowl. So uh, the, the, the Chiefs' Super Bowl odds are going to be limited by the fact that the Bengals and the Bills are going to be in their way, but I still think that the Chiefs are probably the top squad heading into that final game. All right, Arif, you've wrapped a, a lot of great context uh, and analysis around the uh, the playoff week one for our listeners here in New Zealand. Thank you so much for taking the time and look forward to catching up again sometime. Yeah, thanks for having me. We'd love to come back on.